you know, they weren't sure I was going to show up for my shifts or anything. And as a visually impaired person, we want to work. We're going to show up for our jobs. Yeah. So they saw how how um, reliable I was. And then before I knew it, I was working night shift on the grill because nobody wanted to show up for that night shift. <laughs> A cartoon of a man sitting at a computer typing on a keyboard. The view zooms out and we see dozens of other identical men working in office cubicles. The screen goes black. The words working blind appear in green, typed out as if on an older style computer. Hey everybody, it's Sam with The Blind Life. Welcome back to the channel where I help you learn how to live your best blind life. We are back with another episode in our Working Blind series where we talk to amazing people in the VIP community who are working successfully working in hopes of giving you guys some inspiration on what types of jobs might be uh, available for us in the community. So I've got another cool one with you, uh, for you guys here today. I am here with Lily. I'll let her introduce herself. Lily, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, my name is Liliana, also known as Lily. Um, I work over at a um, nonprofit company called Co Center of Vision Enhancement, and I am their ILS trainer, uh, independent living skills trainer, in case yeah. you don't know the version. <laughs> so, okay, well, cool. Well, yeah, we'll get more into that. Um, first, why don't you share with everybody what your vision impairment is, what it's caused by? So my vision impairment, um, I was born with ocular albinism type 2. So, that means it only affects my eyes, not so much my hair or my skin, like, you know, regular albinism. Um, so bright lights really bother me. Um, my eyes get easily fatigued. I'm very nearsighted. Um, I can't really tell depth perception. Um, and I, I was finally diagnosed in 2014. So all my life, I just knew I had bad vision. <laughs> How do they get the diagnosis? Is it genetic testing or is there certain characteristics? Uh, a, a low vision specialist through DOR, uh, Department of Rehab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For a low vision um, test. And that's when I got connected uh, with adjustment to sight loss. You know, the um, where, where I work at now, I was their client. So they helped me. Get, get the skills I needed to go to school and go back to school and whatnot. Oh, okay. Do you know, happen to know what your acuity is? Yes, my acuity is 2080, best corrected. Without my glasses, I see 2200 and 2300. So that's quite a jump. Well, cool. Okay, so tell us a little bit more about um, <clears throat> your work. How long have you been doing that? Huh? It's been about a year and a half now. For those that don't know what an independent living skills trainer does can you give like just a real quick brief explanation okay so the independent living skills trainer um uh, basically it's exactly what it is it teaches you independent living skills as far as traveling uh money management personal hygiene um writing and communicating advocacy is a big one employment training a little bit of that um, and then supplementary topics like camps and, and stuff you enjoy doing that you used to enjoy before your vision loss that you just can't enjoy anymore. And I help you find other avenues of being able to enjoy what you want to enjoy. Yeah, and that's pretty cool. So that's that's a lot of what I do also where I work. Um, although although I'm kind of assistive technology trainer. But a lot of the stuff we work with is independent living skills stuff. Uh, like, like you know, you and I have had conversations about talking about bump dots and writing guides and accessible prescription options and talking this and talking that. And, you know, and so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you know, the way tags, the pin friend, Estella, this is a big one. Um, oh, you just triggered mine. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> And then, yeah, orientation, just basic orientation and mobility skills, and also connecting you with support groups. Uh, if you're still adjusting the site loss, that's a big thing. We do do support groups as well. And you mentioned um, you were going to college. Um, is this what you were going to school for, or or did you have <laughs> what kind of specific like training or education did you need to do this job? Um, originally, I was going to school for art and then nursing, and then I fell into psychology, and I really fell in love with psychology. 
Um, it doesn't require a lot of vision. <laughs> it's more just using your head. And I got a lot of my experience from just living life and learning how to adjust my vision loss. You know, when my friends were 16 and driving a car, I couldn't even join them. Mm -hmm. So I found other avenues of being able to, you know, advocate for myself. I mean, I took up bike riding. <laughs> um, I, I did the track team in high school because I couldn't see the sports that they played. And I, at least I could measure out how far each hurdle was and knew when to jump. So you said you were a, a client of the place you worked prior to that. So yeah. how did you actually end up getting that job? Did you did you apply for it or, or how did it I go? Um, I actually also had a really good mentor. She was the original ILS instructor. And I still speak to her to this day. She is amazing. Um, and I was working at McDonald's prior. So I worked at McDonald's all through COVID. I got to enjoy all of the COVID stuff. So one, one time I got email uh, towards the end of 2021, and there was a position open at the where I work at now. I'm like, okay, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and try for that position. You know, um, the worst they can say is no. And so I I did the interview over Zoom, and I got the job. <laughs> That's awesome. But they had they had like you said they had already known you, right? So they kind of knew, you know, so at least who you are. And everything else already. Yeah, yeah. That's and awesome. uh, actually, they call me the adventurera, which means I'm the adventurer. I don't let anything hold me back. And it's what I enjoy doing. I just recently took 10 other visually impaired and blind people from uh, Merced to Sacramento to the California Council of the Blind Convention. And that was really interesting, trying to make sure nobody was being lost or, you know, <laughs> behind on the train from the bus to another bus. Um, but I, I do I do have a great time doing this. And I love letting everyone learn how to use their independency and mobility skills. Uh, for a lot, a lot of people struggle with using the elevator. I mean, I couldn't figure out how to do it. They never told me that you needed to swipe your card to get the elevator going. So I'm yeah. pressing buttons. So I'm like, why is this elevator not going? And uh, somebody finally came in and swiped the card. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, lesson learned, <laughs> everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just at a conference where the, the same kind of elevator and I got in and I pushed the button and it actually went up like three or four floors and then didn't even doors didn't even open it turned around and came right back down and i'm like oh, oh, yeah. what's going on and then yeah somebody told me you got to use a card and i'm like oh well so that's, that's the kind of stuff they should really tell you at the at the Thank desk <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so speaking of um you know using all the technology and stuff uh what kind of accommodations do you do you require for doing your job so I have a laptop that Dior gave me, but it's too small for me to see. So they also gave me Fusion or Zoom Fusion. So I do use that. And then I also have a huge screen. It's about 32 inches. So it helps me um, having, you know, to do close up work. Cause like, like I said, I'm still going to school. So I'm doing both on this screen. And then I have a low vision keyboard with yellow in the back with um, black typing. Mm -hmm. So it really helps. Um, I also have a uh, CCTV. There you go. I have an OCR CCTV Topaz. And I liked it because it's easy to use. It's not too hard to figure out the buttons. Um, like, I'm not a technology trainer. I'm not the best with technology. I can get along with it. So that's why I'm my ILS trainer instead. <laughs> <laughs> I also have an iPad that I use. Um, and I have a keyboard that attaches to it. Um, and just the low vision pins are very helpful when I'm taking notes. And I can't forget my Victor reader for when I'm listening in on um, lectures or when I was at the convention, I would also put that to record so I can go home and listen to it. Oh, yeah. Which one are you, are you using? The Victor reader stream. Okay. I mean, do you have the, the three just came out, the brand new one? Oh, see, so yeah, I didn't even know about that. <laughs> I am working on uh, getting me myself some Orpham glasses because they seem okay. pretty. 
it would really help me, especially when I'm out and about and traveling and going to stores and whatnot. Well, so this the job that you're in now, obviously it's geared towards people with disabilities. Um, but the fact that you've you've been visually impaired your whole life means that all your jobs you've been working blind. So a, a big question a lot of people have, I'm sure you run into this a lot, people asking you, but um, I'm curious for your experience of, of when you feel is the best time to divulge your vision impairment or your disability during the hiring process. Um, it really depends on the job because there is such a thing as silent discrimination. Um, I found this out with trying to apply for Taco Bell and all that. And I did tell them about my disability during the interview. And they said, you know what? We'll call you right back. You never know. <laughs> and I did call and I would go in and inquire about it. And they're like, oh, we already hired someone. Uh. So, yeah, I got to experience that. It didn't feel too good. Um, so I do, wh what I like to do is if I do say it during the interview, um, I call that one of my strengths and how I've overcome with my life experience. Um, and then sometimes I'll say it like, mm, I, I pretty much like to say it during the interview, but at the very, very end when it looks like it's a good prospect. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also will remind them when I'm at work and let them know as well. Uh, where I work at now, it's great. Uh, there's other people that actually are working there that are completely blind. that are AT trainers. Mm. So, you know, I had no problem getting accommodations. But like I said, at McDonald's, when I worked there, um, you know, they weren't sure I was going to show up for my shifts or anything. And as a visually impaired person, we want to work. We're going to show up for our jobs. Yeah. So they saw how, how um, reliable I was. And then before I knew it, I was working night shift on the grill because nobody wanted to show up for that night shift. <laughs> and, you know, I also used to work at Bidwell, same thing. Um, and then I also, believe it or not, I worked security at a truck stop. <laughs> That's right. I remember you telling me that. Five in the morning until two in the afternoon. That was my summer job. <laughs> <laughs> And they, they were great with me. I explained to them, you know, like, hey, I don't feel comfortable being now at like five in the morning when it's still dark. Can I just like stay in the office and do some office work? And then I can go out and do security once the sun comes up. And they said, yeah, that's fine. That's good. That's a good point. So I've, I've run into that before also where, um, you know, doing a job and there's some aspect of the job that just didn't click. I couldn't do it for some reason. And so I would like you say, go to the management and say, all right, you know, I'm, 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 I'm here. I'm invested. I want to work. I, you know, I, I love it, but this one little thing isn't really working. Can we shift some somehow and I can do something else? And um, yeah, my experience is most of the time, everybody's super cool about it. They're like, yeah, let's see what else we can figure out. Yeah, exactly. And then as they get to know you, they, they're way more accepting than whatnot. And um you don't feel like the new being part of sort of Yeah. And I've, I've said it many times too, is it's, it's more about employers are more care more about your work ethic and how you get along with your, your colleagues and your, your coworkers and stuff than, than your vision impairment for the most part, obviously you're going to run into some weird stuff, but um, I mean, I worked in restaurants in my early, early twenties and like starting in the dish as a dishwasher and then just busting my tail and having a great attitude and enjoying what I was doing and slowly working up to all the way up to like running the kitchen. And, you know, and it's, it's like the, the vision impairment, we, we worked around it. It was never really that big of a deal. It's just, you know, they were more interested in how well I worked with everybody else and, and getting the job done. So it's all about attitude. <laughs> Now that where you work, obviously, you know, one of the questions is, do you run into any, any uh, negative interactions with coworkers because of your vision impairment? But I imagine you probably don't because it's, that's kind of the thing there. <laughs> walk to the, if we're going down the long hallway, you know, to all our offices, we know to walk to the right. So we don't bump into others. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you say you're still in school. So are you wanting to do something else in the future? 
Yes, I'm wanting to go and get my master's and be an orientation and mobility instructor. That, that would be my main thing. Well, cool. Well, Lily, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for uh, sitting down with me for a few minutes here and answering some questions. All right. Thank you for having me. All right, everybody. Thank you again for watching. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments down below. Of course, if you like this and you would like to see more in the Working Blind series, check out the entire playlist. I think we're up to like 16 episodes or something now. Uh, you'll find that in the video description as well. But that is it. Sam and Lily saying ta-ta for now. We will see you next time. <laughs> what a horrible way to end the video. <laughs> That's not tough for now. <laughs> I know. I might end up cutting that out. I'm like... <laughs>